Hello, and welcome to another episode of the SIRS Group Podcast. I'm Barbara. And I'm JC. And today, we are talking about all the different environmental testings that you can do when you are worried about SIRS. But before we get into that, we should remind you all, our medical disclaimer, we are not medical professionals. We are just patients that have studied the textbook and done all the research, and we love this stuff probably more than is healthy. Uh, And (laughs) so we know a lot of info about it, and that's why we have this podcast. But uh, otherwise, we are not medical professionals, and nothing we say should be taken as medical advice. So let's talk about um, environmental testing. because we. So JC and I have a few episodes of the podcast. You can go back and watch if you'd like. Uh, Just about general um, remediation and like making your home safe and cleaning and all kinds of fun stuff. However, um, when we started this process within ourselves, when we were diagnosed with SIRS in April of 2022, um, we knew a lot less about what we needed to test and what how important our environment was. We did not, we weren't fully grasping the really how seriously we needed to take the cleanliness of our environment. So this episode is giving us a chance to kind of go back and like give advice to to 2022 JC and Barbara as like what we kind of wish we had done in the past um, and also some of the tests that we've done more recently um, as a result of either stalled health or just wanting more information or just making sure our environments are cleaner and all that fun stuff. So um, so yeah, that's why we're doing this episode. And if you're new to SIRS and you're like, what are we talking about? So SIRS, chronic inflammatory response syndrome, happens when someone who is genetically predisposed to being really bad at eliminating a biotoxin encounters that biotoxin. Up until recently, surviving mold would have told you the most common biotoxin is mycotoxins, which are the kind of spores that are released by mold. However, and we're going to talk about this, um, two things you also get from water-damaged buildings in addition to mycotoxins are endotoxins, which are uh, gram-negative bacteria that uh, eat poop. They're basically the end of the life cycle. Um, And actinobacteria, which eat mold, dead human skin. All of this is gross. Mm -hmm. Um, And so my point in saying all of this, the environment testing is testing for those things to see, you know, what the state of your environment is and if cleaning is needed. Is this a safe space for you to be in? Yes, exactly. And um, that is important. Obviously, if you are if you are sick and you are in you, you've tested for SIRS, chronic inflammatory response syndrome, and you have the diagnosis now. So, you know, that at least at some point in your life and probably a pretty significant portion of your life, you have been exposed. The question then becomes, are you currently exposed? And if you're feeling like crap, unfortunately, you probably are. Let's let's start there. There is a chance that you were living in a childhood home and that was really, really moldy or terrible in some way, or you grew up on a farm and you're around like endotoxin, poop situations, all that stuff, composting, all that. And now you're in a cleaner environment, but like your body has not been able to eliminate those toxins as JC described earlier. Um, so yeah, there's a chance that your current environment is not bad. And that's what the testing will confirm for you. And that's why it's important to do the testing. And just to reiterate how important a clean environment is for your healing, I was living in Florida in a home that had a bad environment score. And I started the treatment. I started the binders. And it wasn't until I moved out of that environment and into an environment that I later tested and learned was has a really good environment score. I really lucked out. Um, It wasn't until that move that I started to actually make gains in my healing. And it really was a night and day difference. As soon as I came to the clean environment, I was like, oh, I should not go back there. And so I ended up accidentally moving to a new space because I was just planning on dog sitting. So I only brought a carry-on suitcase. Um, And so that, I I mean, I just want to reiterate how important this piece of treatment is it's the first step of the shoemaker protocol remove yourself from exposure yeah and i i didn't do something quite as extensive as jc but i also accidentally fell into a better situation just in my general exodus from california um i moved to where i'm now 
at in Las Vegas. And I did notice weirdly, I felt a little better, not, not significantly. There was just something different once I moved to Las Vegas that I felt a little better. And this was way before I ever even knew about SIRS. I was carnivore at the time. So I was dealing with health issues and trying to mitigate it with the carnivore diet, but I didn't know about SIRS yet. Um, so I, I want to say like that, even my move from Cal, you know, apartment living in California to a town home that I own in Las Vegas, that was a good move for me. And again, later finding out after testing my home, it's relatively clean and safe uh, for me as well. So, so yeah, the, the moving, it sounds very dramatic. Um, and for some people, especially if you don't, haven't moved very often in your life, it can be. And it and in change, it's one of the most stressful changes one can do uh, is move. But um, it can be a real key to your health. And and yeah, you should always consider that, I would say, if you have SIRS. So jumping into the environment testing itself, uh, most people start with mycotoxin testing. So again, testing for the mold. And uh, the website we're going to be referring to, we'll put it in the description box. It's called Envirobiomics. Um, it's the one that the surviving mold sort of shoemaker certified practitioners typically recommend. Um, and there's two mycotoxin tests you can get. One is called the Hertz Me Too, and the other one is called the ERMI. The ERMI is more comprehensive, and so a lot of people think that might be the better test. However, the Hertz Me Too is actually weighted for the most significant molds for the SERS community. It's also a lower cost. So if you're looking for just that entry point of like a kind of binary yes, no, I can heal in this space. Personally, I would have started with the Hertz Me Too. Yeah. And I got the combo, the Hurts Me and Ermi together. Um, and uh, like you, JC, I think if I could go back and do it again, uh, and we haven't talked about it yet, but there's another test that also tests for what you had mentioned before, the endotoxin and the actinos, I would have gotten the three pack uh, with the Hurts Me Too. So that lowers the cost on the mold mycotoxin part because you're just doing the Hurts Me Too instead of the Ermi, but then you're also getting the actino and the endo score. And that gives you a more full picture of what you're dealing with at your home or yeah. workplace. You, mm. you test anywhere, really. Yeah, places you spend significant time at. So for most people, that's going to be your home. Um, and I would assume for most people, it would also be their their workplace or their work environment. Anywhere where you're spending, you know, more than a couple hours there a day. Even if you're spending a couple hours there a day, I would, I would probably test that environment to see if it's going to be supportive of your healing. And the test that you're referring to is the number seven on Envirobiomics. It's the Hurts Me Too, Actinos, and Endos. And the reason why a lot of providers recommend this test is because they've found through research that a lot of people who have the mold haplotype, which is that genetic predisposition to being bad at eliminating a biotoxin, are actually reacting to actinos or endotoxins, not necessarily the mycotoxins. So for a lot, a lot of people, it's the actinos that they really need to remediate. Um, and it's actually a good thing. If your Hurts Me Too is not super high, but you have a high Actino score, it may mean you don't need to remediate the mold, which is like tens of thousands of dollars, but you could just do the Actino's cleaning, which is still a big heft. It's still a lot of effort to do Actino's cleaning, but it's a way lower barrier to entry to like creating a safe environment for yourself. Yeah, definitely. And for me, um, and we'll, we'll, uh, I guess we'll jump to the the genie test right now. Um, the other option, and I don't want to call it another option. The other thing that you can do to, again, paint the full picture. We're talking about painting an entire picture here. Um, so you get those tests done. The other thing that you can do in addition to that is this unfortunately very expensive genetic test called the genie. And we have done an entire episode on the genie. So uh, we'll link that in the show notes and you can go back and watch that if you haven't already. But the genie test, suffice it to say, will tell you what you are currently reacting to in this particular point in time when you get your blood drawn. And the reason that's important is for me, I got the genie test done and it told me I was reacting to endotoxins. Now that gives me the information. And by the way, it very much, it's also explicitly said I was not reacting to mycotoxins or to uh, actinos um, or to long COVID or, or, or like Lyme, like it, it, it um, eliminated quite a few of the biotoxins from 
even my radar. So now I'm laser focused on endotoxins and similar to the actinos, um, it's, that means that I just need to clean my space a lot better uh, and hopefully bring that number down. So I, that's another, you get to test yourself and like what you're reacting to and get that answer as well in addition to testing your home to see where your levels are at to start with. Yeah, the Genie is a really powerful tool. I would say, you know, if you have a really high hurts me too and your Genie is showing you're reacting to endotoxins, I would still at some point address the mycotoxins in your home. Ultimately, biotoxins have not only this effect on people who have SIRS where we have this chronic inflammatory response, but biotoxins also have a direct impact on nerve function regardless of your genetic predisposition for SIRS. We shouldn't be living in moldy homes. You hear about people having these like extreme reactions to black mold all of the time. So the genie isn't to say like, oh, disregard all of your other tests. It's just like you said, it gives you that focus point of like, okay, this is where I need to spend my time and energy so that I can heal and move forward. And then again, if you hit a stall and your hurts me too is still high, you know, that's another lever you can pull. You could pursue remediation or finding a space with a lower hurts me score. Yeah. Perfect. So now we can talk about best practices for actually collecting the environmental samples. And Barbara has done a stellar reel on this on Instagram. So if you scroll back, you can find this. We should repost it so it's it's higher up in the feed. That's um, and I can I'll link to it as well. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Uh, but essentially, Envirobiomics sends you everything you need. They send you a chain of custody form. They send you the Swiffer duster that you're going to use to collect the dust. They send you gloves so that you can, uh, you know, not cross contaminate anything. Um, and then you can also pay for the return shipping label, which I recommend doing because the same cost as if you bought it for yourself and it's just all inclusive at that point. But there are a couple of things you want to do to make sure you collect the dust correctly. And that might be the most insane sentence I've ever said in my entire life. <laughs> Um, but it's important because one of the things uh, we've had people experience is if you collect dust that is really old, that is not representative of the env environment you're currently in. It could be like from an old remediation or an old exposure event. Um, what you want to do is kind of dust your home and then wait a couple weeks and then use the Envirobiomics duster to actually collect the environmental sample. Yeah. And I, I, and by a couple of weeks, I actually, and maybe I did this, it was an overkill, but I waited, I think four to five weeks. So I fully dusted everything cleaned, fully cleaned my home really well. And then I waited about five weeks and then I went and, and hit those areas that I know that I cleaned the first, you know, five weeks ago. And I, that's where I collected my dust. Um, and I did do, uh, this last time, and, and I think this is generally good practice. There's a couple ways you can do it. If you're new to all of this, you can just do one for your whole house. Um, save for don't also test like the attic, crawl spaces, or the basement with the same, like leave those out, but you can test, test the main areas where you live in your home on one. That's a, like a cost saving thing just to get an idea of, okay, how's your whole house? If you have the resources, though, and you want to be more specific um, and or you do find a problem and now you want to pinpoint where it is, that's when you would get one for the first floor and one for the for the um, so the second floor. And then you might also want to get one to test the outside. And that's important because you want to know what is the environment outdoors just at, as a baseline. And that'll give you a good idea. Like, for example, if you live in Florida, your environment is going to be way higher in all of these fun little organisms than, let's say, my area in Las Vegas. Maybe but, you shouldn't live in Florida. Like, <laughs> just saying. Also, to, it's traditional. We have to, we have to, we have to talk Florida a little bit. We have to, like, kick it, kick it while it's down. And I will slightly contradict it but not in the sense that when you do get your environment score and you get that as your control sample if there is a lot of mold outside and then also like the same amount inside context matters 
and you should just move. No, <laughs> what that actually means is like, like if I, so if I had tested out like, and I did, I tested outdoors here in Vegas and then I have way more inside my house than is naturally occurring outside. What you would then show from that is, okay, my house is a problem. There's something within the home that is causing a collection of this issue within it because outside is not that bad. And this is a good, actually a good point. My endotoxin results outside was only 12 and one floor was a hundred and one floor was 120. And by the way, a hundred is like kind of the max that you want. So there's an issue somewhere and I got to figure it out, but, but, uh, but I'm on the edge, but you know, we can always rationalize that. But my point is if you have a lot of mold in your general environment um, and then you have similar amounts inside, it. I think what I would take from that, even if it's in Florida and it's bad, it's not the greatest, is that maybe there's not a specific problem within your home. Hmm. Maybe then it's just the fact of like where you're living. And that's, of course, then you have to start asking yourself some tough questions like, do I really need to live here? Uh, can I relocate to a completely different city, maybe even a completely different state? So that that's where I might go with that. The other thing, um, if you are having trouble collecting dust, if you live in an environment that doesn't have a lot of dust, um, the remediators at Sirs X were sharing this hack that they do where they take trash bags, which apparently are like processed in a like static free environment. I don't I didn't know this about trash bags. Um, but because of that, they have a lot of static. It's like when you, you know when you open the bag and it like feels sticky and you're like, oh, this feels gross. Um that's good for helping you collect dust so that you can collect the dust more quickly. Perhaps if you don't want to wait the two weeks, um, you can dust the trash bag. And then if you need more dust, you can always reseal the Swiffer into the bag and then take it out again to dust again. You would just want to make sure that you're using fresh gloves each time you pull it out of the bag. And and as a point of contention... Uh, at Sir Zex, I, we may have mentioned this in a previous episode, but it's worth repeating. There was like some argument as to whether you should hang the trash bag vertically on the wall or horizontally on some surface that's at least three feet above the ground, but like a table basically, um, and and collect it from there. I'd say do both. If I was going to do that right now, I'd probably do both. I'd hang a couple on the wall like it's a nice little picture, but it's just a trash bag because that's cool. And then also put some on a table or two that I don't use very often to let it kind of collect the dust. Uh, uh, you know, let you you do you let it sit still for a couple of weeks, but the chances of, of um, attracting more dust than your average surface is higher. And that's why you would do that. Another really cool thing that you can do with Envirobiomics is one, if you don't collect enough dust that they can't sample, they refund you a portion of the test. And two is if you, uh, and this specifically seems to happen for people who are looking for a safe environment to live in, they might buy multiple Hertz Mies at a time because you save on the shipping cost to get them to you. If you end up not using all of those tests, they'll refund you a significant portion if you never send it in. Um, so that's important to know too, is if you don't use it, you you lose a little bit of it, but I think they refund like it's over 75% of the total cost of the test. Yeah, I think it is. It's like 80. And and also, yeah, you just have to reach out to them and talk, like let them know, hey, I'm not going to use this test or else they'll, they're just going to never refund you. But but you you let them know and, um, and they can either send you a uh, uh, a new one if you need a new one um because it's some issue like maybe you maybe you tested this would be good in a situation where let's say you're about to buy a house and you put an offer in and the offer's been accepted so now you have a chance to go in there and dust and collect a bunch of dust and then you you put it in the little Ziploc and you save it but you wait you can wait and see if um See if the the like the passes inspection or or you know something else like if you're waiting on some other thing you're waiting for appraisal that's another thing that's important to wait for and make sure that this is actually a house you're going to own um, then you can you can hold on to it and wait for that and if any of those things fall through then you just don't send in the test and you ask for that refund so that 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 would be a, a case in point where you might want to uh, utilize that feature. And in general, Envirobiomics has amazing customer service. I've had trouble with shipping labels in the past, and I would 
I live like three minutes walking distance from the FedEx drop off point for myself. And I have like had it rejected at the FedEx, emailed them on my way to like go back home thinking I would, you know, get the label in the next few days. And they would already have it emailed back to me by the time I reached my house three minutes later. I can't guarantee that service time, <laughs> but it was so impressive. I can't not share. And then the other thing I'll say is I was um, trying to test a uh, location in the UK and I messaged them because I was going to have this short window of time where I was back in the US and I could mail off the sample. So I messaged them to see if I could use my own Swiffer cloth versus using the one that they provided. And they gave me like very specific parameters if I was going to do that, how I needed to handle the situation. So I have to say, I've been really impressed with their customer service just in general. I really enjoy working with them. That's really good to hear. I haven't had to deal with them really on any of those levels. So that's really I'm good. a problem child. Good to know. So <laughs> there you go. They're probably like, like, oh man, this girl <laughs> emailing us again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, someone has to test the system and now you've reported back. So it's all worth it. <laughs> and another cool thing they do is that on the test results itself, it kind of gives you an interpretation. So I referenced the Hurts Me Too score. So it it scores it for you. It does it as a weighted score. So you can see like based on the different mold samples that you have, uh, it's both like the, uh, oh man, I'm going to mess up. It's like the amount of it and the uh, like amount of it in proportion the to prevalence. others. Thank you. Prevalence and dominance indexes. But it scores it for you. You can connect with Envirobiomics and they'll actually interpret, well, you should have your results interpreted by your provider, but Envirobiomics will walk you through what the paper is actually telling you. So they won't tell you like pass fail, but they'll tell you like, oh, this is what the prevalence index is and this is what the dominance index is. That's awesome. Yeah, that's really great to know. And I definitely feel like I need to say this after fangirling on Envirobiomics so hard. <laughs> like we don't get paid by them. We don't have a discount code with them. Uh, I just really enjoy working with them. And I feel like in the SERS environment where everything feels so difficult, like the genie test you talked about is not only expensive, it's actually really difficult to get. Watch our genie episode if you're interested in seeing that kerfuffle. It's so nice to work with a company that's just like, it feels so easy and it's so straightforward. And even the way they name their tests where it's like, you can go get the number seven. Like, first of all, it sounds fun. It's like, oh, I'm going to get the the number seven cocktail. Love potion number nine for me, please. But right. it's like, that's beautiful. But also like, they just make it so easy to work with them. And I really appreciate that. So they need, they need the level of appreciation I'm giving them it is well justified. Yeah. And I, I will say, like, just because we're on the topic, in general, I do not seek out, like, discount codes or, like, kickbacks or any, like, I personally, just for our own integrity, I love that we don't really have ties to any of these companies or doctors that we talk about. Um, that's, I like to keep it that way. Just, I mean, I know that leaving money on the table, but like, I just don't, even if we love the product, I just, I like to be able to recommend people and things and, and, and services like that without anyone thinking, oh, they're just getting a kickback. So I appreciate that about us. Yeah. I love that about us too. I love a lot of things about us. That's one yeah. of the many. Yes. We are also just so great guys. Okay. So now you have your environment scores. I'm going to reel this back in. You have your environment scores. What do you do next? If they are bad, you should probably look into relocating or remediating. We have other episodes on remediation. Definitely look up the surge group remediation. It's a lot to unpack right here, right now. Um, but there are other episodes where you can kind of uh, see our, you know, our experience and um, suggestions for finding a remediator who you can work with. Um, but other than that, if you're looking for more resources and support on your surge journey, you can join us over at thesurgegroup.com. We'll see you there.